It's Steve the Car Guy here, and what I've got is got a 2008 Chevy HHR with 150,000 miles on it, and I'm getting some clunking noises when I'm driving, and I also had some uneven tire wear the other day when I went ahead and replaced the pads and rotors. So upon further inspection, if you go ahead and nine and three, you'll see definitely some, you guys, not only you see the movement, but you can hear it, and if you go 12 and six, it's a little bit of movement. There's definitely some movement, but it's not as bad, <coughs> but the real movement is right here at nine and three. So what I'm basically looking for is, it's either gonna be a wheel hub, which is right here, you're gonna have a tie rod, you got a ball joint, you've got your sway bar link pin, so a lot of different suspension components, and you're trying to figure out what the problem is, what component it is that you need to replace before you start replacing components. You know, I can go ahead and do this and say, oh, look at that, it's moving here, and it's moving here, and you got a lot of videos on the internet that will tell you that if it moves in both places, it's gotta be your ball joint, and I can go ahead and take this axle nut off and replace the ball joint, and it's a really big job, and then all of a sudden I do it, and then maybe I still have that problem, and then you're like, what am I doing? And you're replacing parts for the sake of replacing parts, you really shouldn't be doing that. So the first thing you do before you do any kind of job is you need to properly diagnose what it is you're dealing with so you know replacing the part that you need to replace. So again, we're gonna have to do a nine and three, and we can see the movement, and 12 and six. So go underneath the car and take a look, and the first thing we're gonna look, be looking at is the tie rod, the outer tie rod, which is gonna be right there. As it is, the outer tie rod has a cracked boot, so I was actually going to go ahead and use a tie rod replacement tool, and I was gonna pop out the tie rod and replace the boot today, but then I started shaking it, and I realized that um, things were a little bit looser than I thought. So if I grab it by nine and three o'clock, people, and I put it back and forth, <coughs> I believe you can see and hear the tie rod moving right there. And if I go at 12 and six, you may be able to see the tie rod moving, but it won't be as exaggerated and as much as it would be when it's at the nine and three position. So nine and three, tie rod's moving. Now if you bring the camera over and you look at the ball joint over here, so we're testing for the ball joint too. Ball joint, it's all basically a, so, uh, you know, a shoulder socket type of ball and socket type of situation. But we do this and the ball joint does not move at all. So what this tells us people is, if you had any movement in either the tie rod, the ball joint, or your sway bar link pins, or anything else, um, then you need to go with those components first before you go ahead and do a wheel hub and a wheel hub bearing assembly, because that's a much bigger job. You gotta take out the axle nut, you got three nuts connecting to the steering knuckle, <coughs> you have to run a special tool and a big, a big, big socket for that, and it's basically about a three hour job if you're doing it yourself. So again, people, just so you can see it again, you'll see I'm at nine and three, and you can see the tie rod moving, 12 and six, you might be able to see it a little bit moving over there. But at this point, my conclusion is that the tie rod is bad, the outer tie rod, so I've gone ahead and ordered it. It's a Moog, it's like $42 at Advanced Auto Parts, and I got a 15% discount, so out the door it's like $40.29. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up, and then uh, we'll go ahead and make that video for you guys tomorrow, and I'll show you exactly how to replace a tie rod and maintain your car's alignment at the same time. Thanks for watching.